Hey everybody, and thank you for joining us here at our second annual Dialysis at Home virtual event. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. For those who don't know me, my name is David Rush, and I'll be your host for today. I'm a recording artist, radio personality, public speaker, and also a long-term kidney disease patient and former transplant recipient. With experience doing in-center home dialysis and home hemodialysis on two different machines. I'll share more of my experience later on today. But first, let me thank and introduce our hosts of the program, American Kidney Fund and Home Dialysis United, who made all this possible. Also wanna give a shout out to our leading sponsor, Outset Medical, the maker of the Tableau home hemodialysis machine that I actually use. We have a jam-packed day of live panel discussions, breakout sessions, and an opportunity to connect with the makers of different dialysis devices and new types of clinics. I can't wait. So stick with me and I'll guide you through today's program and make sure you get to take advantage of every learning opportunity. First though, I thought you'd like to hear from the leaders of the two organizations that are hosting today's event so they can share with you why they're even doing this and what they hope you'll gain from today's program. LaVarne and Nelcha, will you please join me by the cozy fire here? Thank you guys for joining me. LaVarne Burton is the president and CEO of the American Kidney Fund, or the, AK, or, or the AKF, a, non, a national nonprofit organization whose mission is to fight kidney disease and help people live healthier lives, which he has led since 2005. The AKF works on behalf of 37 million Americans living with kidney disease and the millions of more at risk with the unmatched scope for program to support people wherever they are in their fight against kidney disease from prevention through transplant. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, David. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Next, let me introduce you to Nelcha Giddy. Nelcha is the executive director of the Home Dialyzers United and a fierce advocate for policy change to support the needs of the nation's dialysis patients. Nelcha herself is a home dialysis patient. She spent 20 years avoiding dialysis and then found herself crashing into the ER and placed on emergency home hemodialysis or home or hemodialysis, excuse me. After starting home hemodialysis in 2014, she felt great. And she devoted herself in the years since educating patients about their options and doing dialysis at home and thriving in their terms. Thank you for being here, Nelch. It's such a pleasure to be here today with everyone for our second annual summit. All right, guys, let's, let's jump into some questions here. I want to talk to you guys and feel free to jump in wherever you feel comfortable. And uh, let's just get this day going. So for our audience members who are not as familiar with our organizations, can you share a little more about your mission and why you care about helping people navigate their home dialysis options? So I'm going to jump off and, and start at Home Dialysis United. Our mission is to inspire, inform and advocate for an extraordinary quality of life for the home dialysis community. And that's what we've been doing since 2006. It, home dialysis is literally what our organization is about. We focus on the one thing and one thing only, and that is dialysis in your home. Our organization is run by patients and is a resource for patients. And of course, I am a fierce advocate for standing up for what dialysis patients need and want. So this is at the core of everything we do. I want to talk about the American Kidney Fund and perhaps add to what Nilja just said. At the American Kidney Fund, we've been in existence now for over half a century, and our mission really is around helping people fight kidney disease wherever they are in their journey. We think we have programs that provide uh, for prevention, education, disease management, financial assistance, as well as research, and very importantly, advocacy on behalf of patients. Home dialysis is a really very important part of our mission, especially in our AKF Kidney Health Initiative for All, which focuses on making sure that everyone affected by kidney disease is able to get the care that they need. All the home dialysis is very, very often leads to better outcomes for people. Uh, it is not as well used and not as well known. We're delighted to have this opportunity to work with Home Dial Dialyzers United to really put this in the top of consciousness of folks so that they are more aware of the benefits of home dialysis and better in a position to make a choice about what's best for them. Okay, so being a patient, you know, I know the things that I want to take away from this, you know what I mean? But what, what are your guys' hopes for what people take away from this event today? Like, what are your hopes and dreams that they'll just walk away with knowing and, and learning from this event? 
Yeah. You know, I think I could not have said it better uh, what Nilja just said, because what we want patients to walk away from this day or whenever they uh, have a chance to watch this program is we want them to feel empowered empowered to take charge of the care that they are receiving for the disease that they live with. Nilcha knows this really well. This is a very personal thing. And we don't want people to feel that they are part of some formula that if you get kidney failure, you do X, Y, and Z because everybody else does X, Y, and Z. You need to be in empowered um, and educated so that you can make your own decision together with your healthcare professionals as well as your, your family and other supporters on what's best for you. Uh, we're here, uh, as we know, Delcha and her organization are also here to support patients wherever they are and whatever they need. So we want them to walk away feeling empowered and feeling that this session has provided them some additional information to inform their decisions. Great. Lamar, that's great. I'm not sure I can top that, but, and I echo every one of your hopes and, and and uh, statements there. But I would just add that I hope the attendees are able to really connect with others here and be comfortable talking with them about their stories, sharing and chatting, and uh, right here on our platform, our interactive platform, or by speaking with representatives of the ex at the Expo booths who also have a wealth of knowledge. So also know that there are ways to continue to learn about your home dialysis options after this event. Our takeaway from last year's summit was that you wanted more. I mean, people didn't leave. So we took that and started a uh, launched a monthly webinar series called Let's Talk About It, which will continue um, after today's event and give you a venue to keep it exploring and um, asking more questions and understanding uh, your options for home dialysis. Great. So now let's I want to I want to switch gears here and really get into some of these questions that are meaningful to our viewers and, and to myself and people like you as well. What are the most urgent issues that you think are, are facing dialysis patients? It's a two part question. The second part is what role can home dialysis play in having people navigate these issues? You know, David, I want to start responding to that by focusing on what happens to the average person diagnosed with kidney failure. Uh, unfortunately, what happens too often is that a person becomes ill thinking maybe they've got some flu or something like that because those are the symptoms. They go to the emergency room for treatment of that kind of condition and they're told your kidneys have failed. We need to put you on emergency dialysis right away. Uh, a person faced with that decision suddenly has a a dramatic, very dramatic, I can't overstate that, change in their in their life. Uh, they have to go to dialysis three times a week. If they're in center dialysis, maybe three or four hours. Um, they may no longer be able to work. They're dealing with the possibility of infection. They're dealing with the possibility of other illnesses and hospitalization. Everything is happening all at once. And then in addition to that, because of the disease, they've got to change their diet uh, so that it's more uh, kidney friendly. So the, uh, the person who moves into kidney failure is faced with a lot of challenges and sometimes they come at them so suddenly. One of the things that home dialysis does is it begins to help you deal with some of these challenges. For example, if you're on home dialysis, you have more control of your schedule. You may be able to adjust work hours rather than having to totally discontinue working so that you are not faced with as dramatic um, a, a challenge with regard to your employment and with regard to your income. And by the way, that also helps other family members or others who may have to help you drive to dialysis. They may not be faced with, with that kind of burden. So in terms of the burden from a financial, economic, lifestyle perspective, um, you know, it can help you with so many issues if it's appropriate for you. And then in addition to that, the outcomes of home dialysis when it's appropriate for you may also be better. And so there, it's an option that people really need to carefully consider because it does have advantages, lifestyle advantages, healthcare outcome advantages. And that's what this session is all about, is to 
make this kind of discussion a top of mind issue for people who are faced with the decision on now that I've been diagnosed with kidney failure, what do I do next? And, you know, uh, just echoing those, being a home uh, dialysis patient, it has helped me to kind of gain that independence back as well, to be able to navigate through this and still be a father, still be a husband and, uh, you know, just be able to do things at different times on my time. It really does get that independence back. And uh, yeah. also that, that psychological home. impact, that exactly. psychological impact that I am not controlled by exactly. this disease. It does help with the mental side of it, too, because it is a trauma that we deal with. No, I'd love to hear from your point of view on this. Well, story. exactly. I'm a fiercely independent person and have been all my life. And so, you know, there was when they asked me to uh, who would be my care partner when I, I treated, I said me. And so I, I totally understand about that independence. And fortunately, for 10 years, I've been able to do that. I traveled all over the country, still do so. And um uh, in speaking and talking to other groups and people about the benefits of home dialysis. You know, unfortunately, dialysis patients face um, a higher risk of mortality, and especially in those first years. So for me to reach 10 years is, is a pretty big milestone. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're limited to in-center dialysis, you have a lot of not just restrictions for work and travel and um but there's environmental disasters, there's natural disasters, you know, your health struggles can keep you from getting to the clinic. Um, there are just so many events that, that center around your dialysis treatments, it controls your life. Whereas at home, I control my life. And that's the beauty of home dialysis. Um, it's not a one size fits all modality. And in the course of my journey, you know, there've been different, um, types of home dialysis that I do at different times. Sometimes it's a longer treatment. Sometimes I do a couple short treatments in every day. Um, you know, it just depends on, on the situation. Um, but it's all about what is right for me at the right time. And that again is why home dialysis access is so important. And I hear you so I'm you gonna know, go. I can't figure out how to turn off my iPhone. I just got it. And you, you a busy, you a busy lady. There's probably a little clip on the side. There's a little, there's a little switch on the side that if you pull it to the back, it'll silence it. Okay, I think there that's we go. It. When you living in this dialysis okay, world, you know, you get when you handle silence. a business like this, a home heal dialysis, and you're a big boss like Nelcha, and you're a sponsor of this event and hosting this, you're gonna get phone calls, ladies and gentlemen. It's just natural. <laughs> you know, my phone so, rings. Never rings. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, we we got a lot of we got a lot of people out there that you know maybe have their own conceptions about home dialysis and the own conceptions about dialysis as a whole. You're gonna have yeah. people who are scared about it, people who agree with it, agree with it, people who don't agree with it. From your point of view, like what are the biggest misconceptions about home dialysis? And and a two part question, and what isn't being discussed enough about it? So you know you there's misconceptions and there's things that aren't talked about enough. To you, what do you think those things are? So most people don't even know all the options that they have. For instance, at home, I mentioned that you can do short daily. You can do nocturnal overnight. You can do every other day. You can do every day. You know, working with your clinic team, clinicians or your clinical team, the most important thing about home dialysis is working out a schedule that makes you feel your best. We've got people, members of our group that do seven days a week. You don't do that for the fun. You do it because it makes you feel really good. Right. You know? and, and other people just starting out might start on a much slower um, uh, schedule, maybe one or two treatments a week to get started. So this is the beauty again of home dialysis is allowing um, for your own schedule uh, that makes you feel your best. Um, and another thing about home is that you can, there, a myth would be that you have to have a care partner. And years ago, HDU actually addressed this issue because we wanted to make sure that, I'm getting an echo. We wanted to make sure that everyone was able to do home dialysis, whether they had a care partner or not. Um, and so, again, I've been successful at do doing my own dialysis for 10 years. Um, anybody can be a candidate for home dialysis. There really aren't any restrictions other than 
honestly being homeless because it, it, you can't do it on the street. <laughs> but right. um, that, you know, you, um, we've had people who were blind, deaf, amputees. Um, one member of a board in the past, he ne didn't have any fingers and he self cannulated. Wow. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's kind of like where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. David, you asked about misconceptions um, and, and there are a number. One misconception is that home dialysis isn't safe. And, and Nilcha just talked about, you know, the conditions and everything. It, it's, let's be honest, it can, it can be intimidating. I right. think that you're going to take on the responsibility for giving yourself a treatment that is basically a life-saving treatment. And that, and that if something goes wrong, you know, it, that's it, the outcome can be very disastrous. Uh, but home dialysis is safe. And very importantly, you don't just walk in someplace and pick up the, uh, the equipment and the materials. Um, you have a care team that will work with you in assessing, number one, whether this is the appropriate thing for you, whether this is the appropriate modality of uh, treatment for you. And, and number two, go into your home and uh, help you to assess, you know, what your facility is like, where's the best place to, to, to do it. Uh, and so you're not just picking up something and walking out on your own and trying to figure it out. There is a support team and that's really, really important. And that support team is important from step one of your deciding, is this the right thing for me to do to if I'm going to do it, then how do I do it? Do I have a care partner? Do I not have a care partner? Where am I going to do it? Where in my house? So all of those are, again, individual decisions. What we want to do today is to talk about what those choices are and to make sure that people are well informed to make them. So, we, you know, just helping these people to understand those choices, that they have choices. choices. I think choices is like the main word here that people have these type of choices that they can ask, things that they can ask and accommodate their, their personal lives. That's always something that we want. I think every human wants in everyday life is a choice to be able to do something that's going to benefit them or does it benefit them. So another question for you guys, the theme for this year is thriving on your own terms. I love that. Doing your own thing. That's what I call it. Do you. You know what I mean? And we want we want patients to be able to do them and, and live life by their terms. What does that theme mean to you guys? I know to me, it just means like handling your life the way you see fit for yourself and being able to live your life while dealing with this traumatic circumstance, but still living your life on terms that make you happy. What is this? What is this meaning of thriving on terms mean to you? Well, I remember very clearly the short time I was in center and that I had no control over my life. I, uh, again, was told when to be there. I couldn't uh, change my schedule, couldn't visit friends. Yeah, I said, and that was not for me. So thriving on my terms was exactly the opposite of the in, in center dialysis experience. And um, I chose not to be a victim, but an independent uh, person who deals with my treatments as I need to. Right. Uh, it's all about figuring out what really matters to you. For me, it was travel. I needed to be able to travel. I needed to be able to um, be there for my grandchildren. Um, and all of these things are, were important to me. And again, so I, the home modality allowed me, if, if my granddaughter uh, called it and said, I need to be picked up from school, I could be there. And I didn't matter that I, you know, I could do my treatment later. You know, if I was in center, I didn't have that luxury. I could not change my schedule. So it's, you know, whatever it is, family, work, vacation, travel, you have to find what matters to you and then how you can fit your dialysis into your life, not life into your dialysis. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can't say that any better than, than Nilcha. You know, we talked earlier about the ways in which having kidney failure dramatically and very often suddenly changes your, your, your life. Uh, too often, takes control of your life. And so thriving means let me take back some of that control. Mm -hmm. And for those of us uh, like Nilja, and I'm like that too, I'm a very independent person. And you know, no matter what the situation is, if I feel that I've got a lever that I can use to put some things on my own terms, 
that is so much better for me. And then I can deal with those things that I can't change. I may not be able to change the fact that I have the disease or that I'm in kidney failure, but if I can have some control over how it's treated and when it's treated so that I don't have to give up the rest of my life, then you know that's a big win for me. If you choose that you want to do home dialysis, then do home dialysis and be able to do it on your terms. If you want to totally separate your dialysis and your treatment from your home and you want to be in the center, then do that on your terms. What we're talking about today is how do we level this playing field so that people don't feel that the decision is already made for them and they have to walk lock, lockstep into something that somebody else has, has laid out for them that you've got control of what you do and when you do it. Great points. Now, last question here before we get our day really going here on these events. I wanna know which part of today's programs are you most excited for? And can you give any teasers to the audience of what they're gonna to get today? Don't give them too much because I want them to stick around, but tell me the parts that you're excited for and, and give them a couple of teasers of what they can expect today. Yeah, I'm really excited about the opportunity of doing this for a second year in a row. Uh, we got such positive feedback last year. We continue to talk about, particularly in our um, um, healthcare for all initiatives, we're concerned about equity in healthcare. We're concerned about those areas where there are disparities because perhaps one group does not have access to treatments in the way that another group does. And we know for a fact that that is true with regard to kidney disease. And that's why we started our equity initiative. I'm really excited about closing those gaps, closing those ed education uh, and awareness gaps about the fact that people have choices. And so this year's program gives us a second opportunity to go at that, to reach more people, make sure that they are informed so that they can make the decision that's best for them. And Elsa? So, you know, I can't wait for all the patient panel discussions. You know, over the years, we've learned that, that patients want to hear from other patients. So we learned a lot from last year's program um, and the patient panels were always a favorite. So we've got more this year for everyone's enjoyment. So everybody grab us a cup of coffee and settle in for a day of fun and learning and fact-filled uh, information. Uh, about how home dialyzers are thriving on home dialysis on their terms. Well, well ladies, I couldn't say no better myself. I'm excited for the day as well. Thank you so much, both of you, for sharing. Now I'm going to kick things over to Doris Chattel, Executive Director of the Medical Education Institute, who's got great resources to show you, and it's going to be called My Dialysis Choice Tool. Dory, take it away. Thank you, ladies, again. Enjoy, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. What a great interview. So I am thrilled to be here today to tell you about my kidney life plan. I'm Dory Chattel and I run the Nonprofit Medical Education Institute. And we built this tool because it's really hard to be in a place where you have to make choices, none of which may look good to you. And when you're in a situation where you have to choose something and all of the choices look bad, the thing to do is to reframe that and to figure out of the choices, all of which look bad, which one is going to make your life work the way you want it to? Which one is going to give you the things that make you want to get up in the morning, the things that bring you joy? What matters to you is the question that you can use to frame your choice. And this tool we built to help you do exactly that. So the idea is that you can use this to figure out what fits your life best. We suggest that you choose three values. I'm just gonna do one because I don't have enough time to do all three. But if you choose three, that's kind of a good amount. There are 23 values to choose from. Each one takes about five minutes to go through, as you'll see. So I'm going to pick uh, working and going to school, but the values are in categories. There's lifestyle values, there's health values, and there's relationship values. And all of these came from your fellow warriors. So I've picked this value. I wanna show you a couple things. One is this tool toggles to Spanish. So if English is not your first language, it is Google Spanish, but it still may be easier for you. And it toggles back to English. 
you can see either dialysis. Let me just do that. You can see the dialysis options. I'm just going to scroll kind of fast just for a second. You can see transplant and you can choose to see comfort care. So this tool is about every kind of treatment for kidney failure. You can choose as you go through which ones you want to see and which ones you don't. We're going to leave dialysis and transplant for now. For dialysis, you're going to see four boxes, which is actually about seven types of dialysis. And the key message up top here is it is possible to work or go to school. But some treatments are more work friendly or school friendly than others. And that's what the, the bullets in each of these boxes can help you see. So you can choose zero to five stars, depending on how you like the, um, the bullets in each of these boxes. So let's say peritoneal dialysis. Let's say, all right, with Cycler PD, you could do it at night. What's Cycler PD? I never heard of Cycler PD. You're in luck. We have pop-up definitions. So you can learn what that is if you want to, but you don't have to. You can just go through it without learning anything. And then based on this, you can decide, and I'm not gonna think about these. I'm just gonna show you how it works. PD looks pretty work-friendly. Standard hemo in a clinic, when you don't get to choose your schedule, it's, maybe it's less work friendly, but you decide your stars. I decide mine, you decide yours. Daily hemo can be work and school friendly, um, might have more energy. If your machine is portable, you could bring it with you for work trips. That looks pretty friendly. And nocturnal hemo means that you could work during the day, which most people do. So that might be more work friendly depending on your work hours. And how about a transplant? Let's see. By a year later, 71% were packed to work. That looks pretty good to me. I think I'm going to give that a five also. And I'm not going to rate comfort care because it isn't right for me, but it might be right for you. So we hit next and we see the summary. And the summary shows you all of the different ways you could do dialysis and transplant and comfort care. And if you didn't rate it, it just gets a zero. And then you can look at your stars and you can start to get a sense for what fits your life best, what's going to make your life work. When you're done, you can send your results to your doctor. And that's important because your doctor may not be as focused on your values as you are. And when you hand them this chart and they can see what's important to you, it can make that conversation easier for you and your doctor. We have a survey. And you're going to want to talk to your care team. You're going to want to learn more about the options. We're going to be connecting some, a video, a little animated video about each option to this tool very soon, within the next week or so. You want to keep your goals in mind. Remember what matters to you. That's the most important thing. And then if a treatment doesn't turn out to be a good fit, you can switch. So if one value, like I did, isn't enough to help you pick, you can add more values. You can just go right back through that list. You can add as many as you like. You can do them as often as you want. And once you've gone through this process, you should have a better sense of which option is going to make your life work. And at the end of the day, that's what really matters. So we're going to go back up to the top and I'm going to give this back to David and you all are in for a treat. The very first patient panel of today. Thank you so much.